My name is Aaron Critch, and I'd like to share with you today a recent case I had of a meniscus repair. So here's the case. A football player presents with an acute ACL injury, but also has this tear in the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. And we see some signal in the posterior horn that extends to the inferior surface. When we look at the coronal MRI images, we can also see that perhaps this tear may extend beyond the posterior horn and also into the body of the meniscus. So when I'm planning this case, I'm thinking about the location of the tear. So I know with all inside from an ipsilateral portal, I can reach the posterior horn very well. From a contralateral portal, I can also reach the posterior portion of the body. But if that tear extends beyond, we might need other options such as inside out. So for this case where I'm not quite sure where the tear is gonna extend, I really want an entire toolbox. So here I'm gonna bring all inside with the fiber stitch and the knee scorpion. I'm gonna have the ramp lasso available as well as the zone navigator with the inside out mini suture tape. So with this ACL deficient knee, my first pearl is you can't fix what you can't see. So when you initially get into this scope, the tibia is subluxed anteriorly because of the ACL deficiency. So in order to see better, what we need to do is apply a posterior drawer and then valgus. And you can see that really opens up our tear site. So now we get a complete diagnostic arthroscopy. And what you can see is that this tear perhaps progressed since the time of the MRI. Remember your MRI is just a snapshot in time before you get to the OR. And then we can see that it's contained to the posterior horn. So this tear really does not extend much into the body. Therefore, I'm gonna apply an all inside approach uh, to repair. And what I'd like to use is the fiber stitch, all inside meniscal repair device. In particular for this case, what I like about it is versatility. So this is a tear that I really wanna place stitches both on the top and the bottom of the meniscus. And with the straight, the 12 degree and 24 degree up curve options, as well as the reverse curve options, I know I'm covered going into this case that I'll be able to accomplish that. So when we look at the repair device, we can't forget the essential principles, what we call the ABCs of meniscus repair with anatomic reduction, biologic preparation, as well as circumferential compression. So for this tear, we'll first perform biologic preparation. So sometimes we're able to use a shaver. A lot of times we really like the Arthrex rasp. We can get in the tear site, we can abrade the synovium, we can even get the back of the tibia to really deliver cells to healing at the site. Then your first stitch is your absolute most important stitch. You must obtain an anatomic reduction. So I go where I can see the tear the easiest, and that for me is in this location. Here it's a vertical longitudinal tear, so we're gonna use a vertical mattress configuration, just one perforation of the meniscus, and here we really get a nice tensioning and an anatomic reduction. From there, we move more centrally. Now what we need is circumferential compression. So I need to be able to reach the tibial surface of the meniscus, and the reverse curve here is a perfect option and tool for me to do that. So again, we're gonna continue with vertical mattress sutures, so we're easily able to perforate the inferior part of the meniscus and then the capsule. And really you can see when we're tensioning, now you see reduction of the gap on the back side of the meniscus and really getting that anatomic recreation that we want. For this tear, this tear will extend all the way to the root, so then we'll add a third repair device. We'll stay on the inferior aspect of the meniscus. Again, you can see really nice tensioning with the fiber stitch, and really we get a nice anatomic construct with great circumferential compression around the entire meniscus. So why circumferential compression? Well, if we only place sutures on the top side, you're gonna gap open the bottom side and get incomplete healing. If we respect circumferential compression, that will get a larger zone of healing, and this leads to more complete repair. So you get a more satisfying six-month MRI, here showing no signal in the meniscus. So for this patient, uh, here's our preferred rehabilitation protocol. So week zero for four, we will allow weight bearing as tolerated. As long as the knee is in full extension, we'll convert that axial load into compression across the tear site. We will limit range of motion to 90 degrees. From four to six weeks, we'll wean out of the brace and progress to range of motion as tolerated. We'll then avoid deep loaded flexion or squatting beyond 90 degrees for the first three months. And then with this ACL, anticipate return to sport between seven and nine months. What about clinical outcomes for fiber stitch? Well, you can see a very quick reduction of pain by six weeks after surgery with the fiber stitch. When you look at COOS ADL in terms of function, we see that by three months, there's a substantial improvement that's maintained out to two years. 
And then finally, how do patients overall rate their knee with the SANE score? You can see continued improvement even from one to two years uh, with the meniscus repair. So in conclusion, for me in 2022, it's important to remember your ABCs of meniscus repair. The Arthrex Toolbox allows many options, but the all inside with fiber stitch remains versatile and the workhorse for most meniscus repairs. Thank you very much.